Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and I hope you had a great holidays and a happy new year, and it's time for my lazy butt to get back to work. Yeah, I'm a little behind on a couple of news stories because I took true holidays this year, and let's do some catching up. And we're going to start off with SDL, because a pretty major event happened with SDL, and that is a new release. As you can see from here, top right corner, the newest version is SDL version 3.4. Now, SDL doesn't update all that often, so this is a big deal. So what exactly is SDL? It is a cross-platform development framework for low-level stuff. It's for dealing with things like the keyboard, audio, joysticks, creating windows, and handshaking with things like OpenGL and Direct3D. Uh, and it is used very, very heavily over at Valve. So uh, the one thing that's really cool about SDL, this is a open source C library, but there are language bindings for just about every programming language you could imagine. So right now you can see for SDL 3, uh, we have language bindings for Beef, C Sharp, D, Delphi, and Pascal, Go, Nim, Odin, Perl, Python, Rust, V, and Vala. And if you think that's a lot, well, let's go look back at the version 2, where you have it for pretty much every programming language that was ever made. Uh, 3 is a little bit behind just because it is frankly newer, and the bindings are still being worked on. So, how much is SDL actually used? Well, here to give you an idea. This is SteamDB looking at the technologies that games on Steam use, and 6,467 products use SDL. Yeah, this is an important library. It is used heavily at Valve. So a lot of Valve's products, such as uh, Portal, make use of it, Hacks Life Alex, Half-Life 2, and so on. Uh, and then you can see all the stuff that uses the Source Engine, like Gary's Mod and Counter-Strike make use of it as well. And then you're also going to notice things in here like Hades. So yeah, it is a very popular framework. If you are completely unaware of it, you should probably familiarize yourself with it. But the other thing you're going to probably notice here is, wait a minute here. Bellatro wasn't made using this, it was made using Love and Lua. Uh, and that is true, but the thing is, Love uses SDL. Thus, it needs the libraries for SDL, thus it shows up as an SDL project. So SDL is sort of everywhere. And that's because SDL takes care of all the low-level crap in a pl cross-platform manner that you probably don't want to take care of. Now, in terms of this release, uh, this is the 3.4 release, and I covered the SDL 3 release back in January. Now, the 3 release was huge, but it was also technically 3.2. Now, 3.2, this is the first version of... Um, the framework that was considered ready for production. So if you were going to use SDL for three, you would start at 3.2. So we're at 3.4 now. So there aren't a lot of updates here. The three release or the 3.2 release was huge in that it added a bunch of things like pen API, file system API, dialogue API, a GPU handling. That's definitely one of the big things that's new and it's going to be relevant to 3.4 is that you've got more GPU functionality being handled by uh, SDL. So what do we have in the 3.4 release? Well, quite a bit, but it's all kind of thrown in there. So uh, 3.4 is here. I don't know that there was a 3.3. Uh, so again, a significant release. Uh, so uh, it is now available in addition to lots of bug fixes and general system improvements. This release has major themes of improved interop between the 3D GPU API and the 2D rendering API. So that was the big new feature in the 3.2 release. It's being basically expanded upon. On top of that, we have improved inscripting support. If you do not know what inscripting is, it is basically a way of compiling C code to run in the web browser. Uh, to compiles it down to a form of JavaScript. Uh, so improved pen handling, uh, native support for ping images. Uh, you might be thinking, wait a minute, PNG was already in there. Well, PNG previously had a, a dependency on uh, an, an external library. It is now core to uh, SDL itself. Uh, and then a bunch of other things here, such as if you wanted animated cursors, you can now create animated color cursors, uh, automatically scale cursors based on display scale. Uh, so pr window progress state improvements there here to show progress in the Windows taskbar on Windows and Linux. A number of GPU improvements for uh, older hardware if you're not using particular features. Uh, and then we come down uh, more and more and more. So there is a ton of like back end things. Again, you're going to notice a ton of this is around the new GPU APIs, integration between that GPU and 
and uh, 2D rendering functionality being improved there. And then we've got other things like YUV textures and HDR color spaces to the GPU 2D renderer. Uh, we also even have support now for the new Steam controller, which is coming out very soon. And I will be interested in picking up. That was one of the nice things about uh, SDL is it also handles, again, that low level functionality. What a lot of, of game engines use SDL for is for handling joysticks, uh, quite simply, because it has a big library of supported devices, uh, including now uh, support for 8-bit do or 8-bit dose con controllers, fly digi. Uh, we have also have support for wired switch two controllers and so on. So if you need to have a way of handling joysticks in a cross-platform manner, well, SDL has been the go-to standard for ages. Uh, and then a bunch more features uh, specific to various different platforms here as well. Uh, and yeah, that is it. That is the SDL 3.5. For, uh, release. Big deal there. Another cool thing here, this was added in 3.2, but if you want to go ahead and check it out, uh, for example, here, if you want to see uh, rotating textures, how you can actually go about doing it, this is an unscripted example. These were added in 3.2, but you can come on down here and check out the source code in extremely white detail. I do think this is available on their GitHub as well if you want to be able to actually read it as opposed to this blinding nature. Uh, you can get a hold of it there as well. So there are a number of examples you want to see the basics of what SDL provides. A number of the functions are here. Again, they added the new pen API here. You can see how you can work with the pen sample code for it down here. And as you can see, this is all in standard C code. Now, one of the interesting things about SDL is Valve's involvement. Now, Valve, uh, the, sorry, the SDL library itself started off back in, I think the per first public release was back in 98. And it was started by a company called Loki Software that did um, porting of Windows games to Linux. So they needed all of this functionality and eventually it just became the norm or the standard. Now the interesting thing is the guy that actually started this all, his name was Sam uh, Lentinga or something. I probably just butchered the pronunciation. But basically it is this guy right here. And he has worked for Valve since 2012. So yeah, basically Valve employ the head guy behind this project. I guess a number of uh, different Valve uh, developers contribute to this project, but the number one contributor, this is the founder. This is the guy that started the whole thing, Sam uh, Lantinga. Uh, he, again, started off Loki Software. He became a Valve employee back in 2012, um, and he's still to this day. So let's go ahead and take a look at the most recent commits. Who is it? Hey, it's still him. So this is very, very strongly supported by Valve Project. Uh, definitely an interesting one that you should check out. And again, 3.4 is now available. It's not really the sexiest thing in the world because this is all about just providing the plumbing that your game needs to run. That's why so many game engines, including Valve's own source engine, build on top of SDL. So, Because re recreating this functionality, it just isn't fun. By the way, there are other projects out there like SDL, including, say, Allegro, uh, SFML, etc., that do the same kind of thing. Uh, but I do think SDL is probably the most popular among that group. And again, SDL 3.4 is now available. It was actually shipped the end of last week. Like I said, I'm catching up from vacation, so I apologize for being a little bit less timely than I normally am. But if you want to stay up to date on the latest and greatest in the world of game development news, plus or minus a week when it's the holidays, uh, do hit that subscribe button. And hopefully you found that interesting. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.